Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a video recording of our uh, lab 1510, section 27, on Thursday, September 2nd. Uh, for this day, I'm not able to attend the synchronized meeting, and that's why we're doing this recording. Please make sure you watch the recording and take your data and finish the homework, uh, the worksheet assignment. But from next week, we will resume back to our normal synchronous meeting on September 9th. All right, so let's get started. Uh, today's lab is constant acceleration. We have talked about this and your instructor for lecture course have talked about this in class already, uh, where if we release an object from uh, the top of a ramp, it will uh, go down the ramp in the constant acceleration. And so we're looking at uh, such a scenario and take data in our lab for today. And we're going to uh, make graphs of velocity versus time and also position versus time squared. Probably have already seen uh, these kinematics equations. The first equation tells you that the velocity of an object at any given moment is equal to V naught. V naught is the initial velocity of the object plus A times T, acceleration times time, right? So uh, when your initial velocity is zero, which means if you release the object from rest and just let it go, uh, then your velocity at any given moment is your acceleration times time, because V naught is zero. So that equation becomes V equals AT. The second equation tells you the uh, position of an object at any given moment is equal to X naught, which is the initial position of an object, plus V naught, uh, initial velocity of an object times time, plus one half times acceleration times time squared. Again, if our initial velocity is zero, the second equation becomes um, D equals one half AT squared. So here D refers to the total um, distance the object traveled on the ramp. Because the object is going in a straight path, uh, if we use the final position X minus initial position X naught, that's the total distance it traveled, right? So it becomes D. So the second equation becomes distance is equal to one half A T squared. And we are going to measure that distance uh, because it's on the, uh, on, the, on, the ramp, on the ramp and there's a ruler uh, along the ramp. So we will be able to measure. And likewise for the third equation, if your initial velocity is zero, and we rewrite x minus x naught using d distance, then d is equal to v squared over 2a. So uh, here is a diagram showing you uh, what we're looking at. The uh, object is initially at the top of the ramp. You release it at a certain point. Uh, at time t equals zero, velocity is zero because it's not moving yet. Right? Let it go, it went down the ramp, and it has some time passed by and some velocity passed by. So the time and velocity at the other end of the ramp will be recorded using the sensor of our lab. So when the ball passed by the sensor, uh, the time and velocity is recorded. And it has gone traveled a total distance of D, which is read by the ruler. You can read it off the ruler. So you can look at the VT graph. So if our if we try to predict what the graph will look like theoretically, we would say the velocity time graph would be a straight line, right? Because uh, it's a constant acceleration. So velocity will increase in the steady rate at a steady rate. So it's a straight line. And the slope is a constant slope indicating a constant acceleration. So the slope that you, so if you collect your data, right? Plot your velocity over time, uh, you should get a uh, straight line, and that slope will tell you how big the acceleration is when your object is um, being released off the ramp. Now, if you were to plot the other graph, distance versus time. Now, we know that if we were to plot D versus T, this is going to be a parabola. So instead, we're going to plot D versus T squared so that it's still a straight line, it's easier to, to analyze. 
and that straight line is uh, one half a, right? Prediction, our theoretical prediction, that the slope of the line would be one half a, which is half of the acceleration. So from your distance time squared graph, you can again um, measure the acceleration, which is twice of your slope. And you can compare this acceleration with the acceleration given by your velocity time graph, and they should agree to uh, each other to a, um, to a good degree. So there are only, um, there are two tables in your data sheet. Uh, the second table is your actual data. The first table is a way that we try to get uncertainties before we begin our actual data analysis. So I will explain uh, uh, what these um, uh, table means and how would you get these table uh, in just a minute here. So this is the first table in your data sheet. And um, what you would do is you take uh, multiple trials when you release a marble, and each time, uh, each trial give you a different time, slightly different time. That's, uh, you can read it directly from your computer screen. Now here is your computer, uh, is a recorded data. And you take the average, which is the average time, and you take the max minus mean over two, that is your sample uncertainty. Uh, the way that we have to do this trial run, the reason for that is we do not have um, knowledge about how the photo gate, how the sensor is built. Therefore, we have no idea what is our instrumental uncertainty. So we don't have no, any idea uh, of the instrument, not like a ruler, we know the smallest scale is 0.1 centimeters, right? Uh, then we will try to get the uncertainty ourselves by doing these trial runs. That's why we're doing this. So that you can use the uh, uncertainty for your time, and you can use the uncertainty for your velocity to be, uh, to be the uncertainty in your actual data collection. So in table two, um, you can see the uncertainty for time and velocity will be what you get from your previous step. And you can write the same uncertainty for all your kind of different measurements. Um, so for table two, you'll let the marble go down at different uh, height and run for different distance, which, so every different distance will be corresponding to a different velocity at the end. And of course, a different time it takes, right? The longer the marble run, the, uh, the longer time it takes and the bigger of a velocity that you will record at the end. So your uncertainty delta t from your table one, after you got it from table one, goes here, and your uncertainty for uh, delta v for velocity after you get it from table one will go here. And your uncertainty for t squared will go here because d equals one half a t squared. And for t squared, you need a new uncertainty. So how do we, uh, once we get uncertainty for delta t, how do we get uncertainty for delta t squared? For example, this is your and a, and a sample calculation for t squared. Let's say your t is 2.75 plus or minus 0.04 seconds. How do you get t squared? Um, so I pause to let you think a little bit yourself. How do I write t squared? So you might say, well, I know how to do the best, uh, the best value for t squared. That's just the best value for t squared. That part is easy, right? So 2.75 squared would be the value we'll write down uh, for t squared. The t squared would be that, that value plus or minus the uncertainty for t squared. So how do we do the uncertainty? So we said, we talked about four different rules uh, in our previous class, which rule would apply here? One is simply, um, if you have additional subtraction, the uncertainty will add. If you have multiplication or division, then the relative uncertainties add. If you have a power, then the relative uncertainty will be multiplied by that power. The fourth one is if you have a known number, then you multiply your best value and your absolute uncertainty by that known number here. Which one of the rules that apply? from t to t squared, you see that is a power rule, right? So we need to use the absolute, uh, we need to use the relative uncertainty of t and multiply that by two 
um, that's the power to get the new relative uncertainty for t squared. Right. So you can see that the relative uncertainty for t squared should be 2.9%. So 2.9% is the relative uncertainty. You, you wanted to write, you need to write it in terms of plus or minus the absolute uncertainty. You need to multiply that percentage by your new best value. That's 7.5625 seconds square. So uh, the relative uncertainty for times square is 0.22 seconds square. So it's a sample calculation here. So you would need to do that sample calculation for, um, for your data in table two, okay? All right, once you have all your data, are you going to plot it on the graph? Uh, we, we wanna practice drawing the graph by hand, uh, even though you could do it by computer. We wanted to be able to practice this skill, uh, knowing how to do it by hand in the future. When you already mastered how to do it by hand, you could use a computer to do the plot for you. We wanna be able to understand the reason behind the best fit. So how we find the best fit? First of all, you plot the data Right, t equals one second, velocity is 25 centimeters per second. For example, you put a dot on your graph paper, you put another dot until you plot all the dots. And you can see that that represent a linear uh, pattern, right? Looks like a linear pattern. So you're going to draw a line through these dots. So how do we draw the line? There seems to be multiple ways the line could go, right? So the reason we find the best fit is that we run as many lines through, um, as many dots through the line as possible. And for those dots that could not be fit on the line, we want equal number of dots above and below the line. So if you, when you do a measurement, you could be sometimes a little bit above your true value, sometimes below your true value. So I find a line that runs equally within, sort of right in the middle, uh, that gives me the best chance of finding something that's close to the true value. So here I have three dots as on the line, two dots above the line, and two dots are below the line. So this will be my best fit. You will do that by hand. And that's also the mechanism behind your, uh, if you plot with Excel or whatever other software, um, that's what they um, did to give you the best fit. So we wanna, we wanna be able to know what is the strategy. Once you find your line, you can find any two points on the line to get your slope. These two points does not have to be your actual data point. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. You can find um, any two points that you think it's easy for you to read data. Uh, for example, T1, V1, and T2, V2 on this line. And you can just do rise over run to get the slope of, the, um, of this graph. So this is a VT. Now, if you plot T of D versus T squared, that's basically the same idea, right? Uh, the same method. So this is what we're trying to do in this lab. That's the theory behind it. Um, now I wanted to show you um, uh, the pre-lab that we did. Just one second. So this is our pre-lab. Mm, this is a practice run of how to plot data and how to find the slope. Okay, so uh, when you're giving graph paper and then uh, you wanna put scale on it, there's more than one correct way to put the scale. But um, you wanted to put the scale in a way that is easier and much as accurate as you can be and as easy for you to read data as possible. So for example, I look at my time uh, the time range is quite small, right? From 1.9 seconds to four seconds. So, and I have this entire length to fit my time on it. So I don't wanna just use half of the scale, right? I wanted to expand it because the more I expand it, the easier it is to draw and also more accurate it will be. So it looks like I can go all the way to five seconds 
10, which means that two of these um, bigger uh, uh, little, uh, little squares, so two of these would be one, right? So that would be two and three and four and five. And then I can fit my uh, y axis for speed. So um, the speed goes all the way to 52. So I wanted to the highest to be 60. So it gives me enough room. But then I, I don't want it to squeeze things in. And I realized the speed, the smallest speed is 27.5. It does not start with um, zero. Right? So which means I don't really care about all the data points below that. So I don't have to always start out my y-axis from zero. I don't have to. Right? If I start from zero, I might get a slope, uh, draw a graph where it intercepts zero, zero, the origin. But uh, if I start my speed from non-zero here, I started from 10, it will still give me the correct slope, which is what I care. Right? Uh, it will not go through the zero, zero uh, origin, but that doesn't matter. That's not what we're concerned about. So I wanted to just start with 10. Uh, and then I, one of these scale is 15, 20, 25, and go all the way up to 60. Okay, so I feel like this is a little more accurate to do than if I had started out with zeros, then the scale would be much more um, squeezed. It's harder for me to read. Okay, so uh, after you define your scale, then you um, plot your data. Just That's not hard, you just have to be a little bit careful. It will be easier if you have a ruler, I definitely use a ruler, so you can like, run your lines above and across. So for example, this one, 1.95, uh, you can see that it's between one and two, right? And then this is 1.5, is halfway in between. And the smallest scale on the T, what is the smallest scale on T? You see that one second is expanded over 20 little small scales. So one second over 20 is 0 0.01, 0 0.05 seconds. That's the smallest scale on T, which means if I want to have increments of 0.1, that, that is two scale. So 1.5, 1.6, that's an increment of two, smallest scale. Right, 1.8, uh, sorry, 1.6, um, 7, 8, and 9. So 9.5, uh, 1.95 is right here, as I indicated uh, on the x axis. And you kind of draw a dashed line above. And then what is the velocity? The velocity is 25, 27.5. Okay, look at the smallest scale on the y. The smallest scale on the y is half of centimeter per second, right? So from 25, uh, 26 will be two of this, two of these scale, 26, 27, 27.5 is this one, and you find your little dot right there, right? So you do the same thing for the rest of the dots, and then you run a best fit line throughout. Notice that yours will not be exactly the same as mine because when you draw it, everybody will draw is slightly different. So there'll be, there, there's, there's going to be a little bit different, uh, but we'll do the best that we could to be as accurate as possible. So I draw my best fit line. I, I can fit two dots on the line and I have two more dots. One is above, one is below. That's the best I could get. Uh, and from the best fit line, you want to be able to find your slope. So here I use these two blue dots. Uh, I choose these two dots because it's easy for me to read um, from the axis, I found these two dots and I calculated the slope using y z. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. This is a pre-lab. Your result will be different from mine. It's not going to be exactly 10.7 because everybody draw it and read it differently, but it will be somewhere close. You might get 11.2 or something, a little bit different from mine. Um, okay, that being said, I want to uh, finally show you how to uh, read your data from our video. So the very first, you have two different um, data here under the videos, uh, big two. The first one is just to show you how to 
um, use the computer and how to use the sensor. Okay, um, so it will be very informative, but it's not necessarily required as the data is already given to you. You're not taking the data yourself, but I think it's good for you to understand what the data is about. So I recommend you watching this video before you, you read the actual data collection video, that's video two. So as I said, the first, um, before we actually take in the data, you're doing trial runs, that's your table one, right? So the, the, the purpose of table one is to simply get your uncertainty for your time and the uncertainty for your velocity measure. Because the time and velocity are given by your computer directly by this device that's called a photogate sensor directly. You don't know who made it, you don't know how it was made. So you don't really know what kind of uncertainty it is, how accurate it is. So you wanna be able to run these trials to get the uncertainty. So I wanna show you um, how um, the data was taken and what kind of numbers you need to write down. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this. So this is the trial one uh, that will, the data will go into your table one, right? Trial run. My trial one, I'm gonna get the result. So you can see that as soon as the marble go through the sensor, uh, the sensor is where that laser little, uh, that little light is, go through the sensor, triggers the sensor and give you a data point. So you can see that time it takes is 0 0.758911, whatever uh, it is on your computer. So you will record in table one 0.76 seconds or time. Okay. And the velocity it gives is 59.6. Four, and you will write that in your velocity table. So this goes on your table one in your worksheet. So the reason we don't record um, the first data point, because that is when we trigger the sensor. We tell the sensor, okay, start the timer now. And, uh, and then we, we use our hand to trigger it. That's why the first velocity is actually the velocity of your hand. It doesn't matter. What we want is your second data point, the second line that I just read off to you. So write that down and it's going to do the second trial. Results for the time and the results for my velocity. And I'll repeat this. So set it again, exact same distance. And you can see that it gives you a second trial with a time of 0.83. So write that down on your table one per second and with a velocity of 60.56 uh, centimeters per second for your second velocity. So it's going to go through this until it finished all the six trials. So what would that look like on your data sheet? Uh, well, it will look like this. Uh, one second, I need to make it to recognize my iPad. Okay, it's not recognizing it for some reason. One more time. Okay, so you can see that uh, the first data point, the second data point for time is recorded here. The first uh, velocity, second velocity is recorded here. Uh, it's going to, the video will going to tell you uh, all the six trials and every trial you get a slightly different number. So that gives you an idea of the uncertainty because the, uh, they release the marble from exact same height, right? So it should give you the same time velocity every time, but obviously, it, won't, it wouldn't, just like when we do measurements, it would not measure exact same thing every time, but every time it's slightly different, it has a range, fluctuates a little. So knowing the fluctuation uh, give you an idea of the uncertainty. So what do we do with these six trials? So you can see you get an average for time. So take the average, don't worry about rounding it. You can keep more decimal places at first. I calculate my average for time is 0.788. And uncertainty will be uh, max over me over two. Okay, max minus me over two is a way to report sample uncertainty. 
So that shows when you do it multiple times, every time is different, I give you an idea of fluctuation that's called sample uncertainty. So max is 0.83, the min is 0.74, right? So max minus min over two. So this is your, sam uh, this is your uncertainty for time, uh, 0.0. Four, five, and then you round it. Remember we said when you have uncertainty, you want to keep it to one significant figures. Uh, so I changed it, I cleaned it up to 0.05. That's one significant figures. But if it's 0.01 something, you want to keep it to two significant figures. But this first number, uh, it is a, a four. So I only need to keep one significant figures. And I will rewrite my time uh, to have the same decimal place as my uncertainty. My time would be 0.79 with uh, two decimal place, just like my uncertainty. So that's how you will report uh, the uncertainty for the time. You do the same thing for the speed. The idea is the same, okay? Uh, so once you got the delta T and delta V, you will put it uh, in the second graph um, and also need to calculate the T squared, delta T squared, just like how I showed you in the slides. Once you have everything, you can um, plot this on your, um, um, you can plot this on the, on the graph that I was I provided. So I encourage you to do this by hand. We do need to practice how to do this. And once you find the slope, you can compare, does these two slope agree with each other? Um, and then they should, um, or one is a, one is the slope is the acceleration. The other slope is half of your acceleration, right? So you need to multiply the slope by two to get your acceleration. They should agree with each other. All right, so that's all for today's lab. Um, so make sure you understand what we talked about in the video before you start watching it. Uh, and you can watch the first video to understand what the meaning of these different um, numbers that's been sp spelled out by your computer and also pause and take as much time as you need. Pause and make sure you write down the correct number. All right, so I will um, make sure um, submit your worksheet by the end of Sunday and I will see you guys um, next week, September 9th on Thursday. Uh, so we will go back to our synchronous meeting. So um, hope you have a good rest of the week and see you next time.